Today on The Hookup, we're gonna take a detailed look at the lightweight Internet of Things messaging platform known as MQTT. MQTT is a lightweight messaging protocol that allows your smart home devices to communicate with Home Assistant or any other MQTT broker. Hass.io has a Mosquito MQTT broker as an add-on and I highly recommend that everyone running Home Assistant is also running an MQTT broker. You could use a remote broker like Cloud MQTT, but I really try to handle everything in-house so I'm not reliant on cloud services for my smart home functionality. Also, because everything in my smart home is within my network, there's no reason to do any port forwarding to expose my MQTT broker or my specific devices to the rest of the internet, giving me a little extra peace of mind. Each MQTT message contains three parts, the message, the topic, and the quality of service, or QoS packet. We'll talk more about QoS later. For now, let's say I wanna turn on my hallway light. I would publish the message on to the topic lights hallway. This process involves three steps. First, I'll need to use a client like Node-RED or Home Assistant to publish my message. This message is sent to my MQTT broker and that broker will then post the message to that specific topic. And my hallway lights, which are subscribed to that topic, will then receive the message and turn on. Your MQTT broker knows a lot about its clients. An MQTT broker knows which clients have connected to it in the past and it remembers them by their client ID. It also knows which clients are subscribed to which topics and it knows which clients are currently connected because those clients send a keep alive message to the broker at a specific time interval. The keep alive timeout is set by the MQTT broker and by default is 60 seconds in Mosquito. If a client goes 60 seconds without sending an MQTT message, Mosquito will then ping that client's IP address to see if it's still connected. It's important for an MQTT broker to know if a client is connected. This is because each client can also have a birth message and a last will and testament message. The birth message will be published every time a client reconnects to the broker. This is a neat feature, but nothing mind-blowing. The last will and testament is a lot cooler. Using the last will and testament or LWT message, you can have a device alert you that it's gone offline. But how does an offline device alert you? The MQTT broker stores that last will and testament message for each of the clients that connects to it. And when that client disconnects, the broker then publishes that message to the specified topic. Let's take a look at one of my favorite MQTT clients, Node-RED. In Node-RED, you've got two major nodes relating to MQTT. One is the published node and the other is the subscribed node. Let's start with the published node. In this node, you can send any message you'd like to any topic. For testing out specific payloads, it's useful to pair this with an inject node and then select string from the dropdown menu. Within the publish node, you'll see a few options. The first is QoS, and we said that stood for quality of service, which along with total message size is a huge advantage of using MQTT over something like HTTP. Quality of service has three levels. QoS zero is often called fire and forget. Let's say my wife has tasked me with getting my daughter to clean up her room. QoS zero would be like me blindly saying, hey Scarlett, go clean your room, without actually knowing or caring whether or not she heard me. I said it and that's enough. QoS one is a bit different. It's generally referred to as at least once. This would be like me saying, Scarlett, go clean your room, and then continuing to say it until I hear her say, okay, dad, I heard you. The problem with this is that if she's responding saying I heard you and I can't hear her respond, I will continue to say clean your room. And she'll think that I'm telling her to clean her room again rather than just knowing that it's the same original message. QoS2 is the final and most data heavy publish. It's known as exactly once. This means that I say, Scarlet, clean your room. She says, I heard you. I say, thanks, I won't tell you again. And she says, wonderful conversation. That means that the transaction is complete. Let's say I didn't hear her say, I heard you. And I said, Scarlet, go clean your room. She would know that because I didn't say, okay, I'm done telling you in between those messages, 
that I must not have heard her acknowledge me, and then I'm not telling her to clean her room again, I'm just repeating the first message that I said. In most home automation cases, QoS2 makes the most sense because we're not really concerned about how much data we're sending. If you're using cellular, you might want to use QoS0 or QoS1. But the amount of data we need to transfer won't even be noticeable compared to the rest of our network traffic. In addition to QoS, you can also choose to send a retain flag. The difference between QoS and the retain flag is that QoS only applies to currently connected clients. If a client is offline during a publish, it will never receive the message. A retain flag tells your MQTT broker, which is Mosquito in my case, to hold on to the last message in each topic in case a new client subscribes to it. Let me show you the difference using Node Red. First, I'll pair an MQTT send node with an inject node, and I'll select string for my inject payload. Let's call this payload not retained. You can also see that there's an option here to set the topic in the inject node. You can also set the topic in the MQTT send node, which is what I'm gonna do. Next, I'm gonna jump over to that send node, and I'll select QoS2 and false for the retain flag. I'm gonna pair an MQTT subscribe node with a debug node so I can see what's going to be sent to my Internet of Things devices. I'll set the topic to MQTT test and the QoS to two. Before I deploy this, I'm gonna cut this subscribe node out so we don't actually connect to it. Let's deploy and send our message. As expected, we can't see anything in our debug window because we're not actually subscribed to this topic. Let's paste our subscribe sequence back in and deploy. As expected, we still don't see anything because we sent our MQTT message while our client was not subscribed to the topic. Now, let's look at a retained message. I'll change my inject node string to retained, and I'll change my MQTT publish node retain flag from false to true. I'm gonna cut out my subscribe node again and deploy. Now we can send our retained message. As expected, we still can't see anything in our debug window because we aren't subscribed to that topic. But here's where things get interesting. Let's paste our subscribe sequence back in and redeploy. As soon as we resubscribe, the last message in that topic was sent to us. Let's cut out the sequence again, deploy to unsubscribe, and then paste it back in and deploy to resubscribe. You can see that the message gets resent anytime the client connects to that topic. This can sometimes cause an issue. Let's say I've misconfigured some of my devices, and some of them send retained messages and some of them don't. I'm going to send the message not retained to this topic with the false retain flag. Let's send it while we're subscribed. As expected, it comes through, no problem. But let's simulate the device disconnecting and reconnecting. You can see that instead of the last message sent, which was not retained, we instead get the message retained. This could cause a real issue if your device needs to have that not retained message sent to it to work as intended. The only way to clear a retained message from a topic is to send a blank retained message to that same topic. We'll just clear out our string, select true for our retain flag, and send it out. You can see that my simulated device disconnect and reconnect now results in no message being sent. Maybe you've done your homework and you were under the impression that QoS2 would ensure delivery of a message even to offline clients. This does work, but only under a few circumstances that aren't actually all that common in IoT devices. Number one, the client must have previously been connected to the broker so that its client ID and subscribed topics are stored. And number two, the client must have connected with what's called a non-clean or persistent session. The most popular MQTT library used in IoT projects is the PubSub client, which is a really great library written by Nick O'Leary who's the same guy that actually wrote Node Red. The PubSub client library doesn't support persistent sessions, which means that every IoT device that uses it, which includes Tasmoda, does not support QoS2 persistence. So you're much better off using the retain flag instead if you want those messages to be delivered to offline clients. The last thing I want to talk about is my MQTT topic schema. If you followed my channel, you've seen projects where I've used both schema types. In my wireless doorbell video, I published the state of the front door to doors front slash front, 
where I put the topic type first and the specific device second. But in my Roomba control video, the topics were Roomba front slash commands, Roomba front slash status, and Roomba front slash charging. Having a consistent MQTT schema lets you debug your messages much more easily using topic wildcards. Let's head back over to Node-RED and look at how to properly use wildcards. For the window sensors in my house, each of them sends a retained message to the topic window status slash and then the specific window name. By subscribing to the window status slash pound sign topic, it will act as a multi-level wildcard that picks up messages from each of my windows. And since all those messages are retained, they will come through at the same time once I subscribe to that topic. Using the other schema allows you to isolate a specific device and see all the MQTT messages sent from that device. By subscribing to Roomba slash pound, I can see any information sent from that specific device. It's up to you which schema you want to use, but I recommend you pick a single schema and stick with it, unlike me. If I had to pick a single one, I'd say defining the device first and then the topic subject second is the superior method. Using this method for my windows, I would define a single level wildcard using the plus signal so I could subscribe to family room windows status and kitchen windows status using the wildcard plus front slash window status. Understanding MQTT will allow you to make interesting programming decisions when writing programs for your sensors. If I knew then what I know now, I would have done a few things differently when programming some of my smart home devices. But that's all part of the fun, I guess. If you have any other questions about MQTT, or you've got a suggestion for another video about MQTT and home automation, leave them down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.